I'm Corey Shepard, your 2016 president, and this is The Scoop. Today I'm reporting on the January 2016 housing statistics. For January sold listings, compared to the previous month, sold listings were down 26%. January sold listings of attached homes, compared to previous month, were down 30%. January sold listings detached, compared to 12 months ago ending January 6, 2016, had an 8% increase. And January sold listings of attached homes, compared to 12 months ending January 2016, had a 12% increase. Now moving to the median price, January median price of detached homes compared to the previous month had a 1% decrease. And January median price attached homes compared to the previous month had also a 1% decrease. January median price detached January 2015 compared to 12 months ending January 2016 had a 7% increase. And January median price of attached homes compared to 12 months ending January 2016 had a 6% increase. Now I have a special guest I'd like to welcome with me today is Saul Klein. Saul is widely recognized as the real estate industry's first internet evangelist. He was selected by the NAR as one of the 25 most influential people in the real estate industry in 2003 and has been selected as one of the 100 most influential real estate people by Inman News nine times. Consultant to the original Realtors Information Network project, including the development and deployment of Realtor.com, Saul served as Vice President of Marketing and was responsible for signing the first 100 MLSs and the first 500,000 listings to appear on Realtor.com. He also served as SDAR President in 1993. Welcome, Saul. Thanks, Corey. Great to be here. So there, there's a great thought, uh, Saul. We've got three major national technology initiatives underway as Realtors. One is Project Upstream. We have AMP and then we have uh, the broker portal as well. So do we know where this is headed yet or how long do you think it's gonna take to sort this out before we have a clear picture about where we're going with data and with MLSs? So if we look at those projects that you mentioned, we look at the broker portal, uh, we look at AMP, and we look at upstream, as I look at those, I think that those are have tremendous obstacles in front of them. Uh, I applaud the people that are trying to accomplish what they're trying to accomplish with this, but I think the, the cards are stacked against them, and I, I wait for positive uh, information about these projects, but even that is short in coming. Many obstacles, but people are thinking about these three major areas today. What, what are the, the, like the largest one or two obstacles that you see in the way for these initiatives that are being taken on by the realtor industry? Well, probably the biggest one, Corey, it's, this has always been the case, is the fragmentation of the industry. It's, it's hard to get everybody to come together on a lot of major issues and agree. It's just very difficult to do. We're all competitors for the most part. So, so with those obstacles, as associations, as MLSs, as brokers and agents, when we think about this big data conversation, is this a point where we should be sitting back and not putting ourselves out on the bleeding edge and just waiting for some of this to clear up uh, and to where we may be on the cutting edge, but a little bit down the road, or should we be jumping out there today? Well, so a couple, of, a couple of things here, and that is, is your MLS providing you the service that you need to earn a living as a realtor? And so that's the most important thing, right? And then all the other stuff is just kind of added and it make it easier and better. And so that's the first thing as we look at, at MLSs today. I don't think that, that in San Diego we're jumping out too far ahead of everybody. One of the things I would caution, however, is that the value of data and the data created by the data, because data begets data, that that has tremendous value that people have not determined yet. And, and you've heard me say this, I believe that in the data is the future. And if I said to you as a realtor, how would you, would this give you a competitive edge at all? Would you like to be able to predict the future to a better degree than your competitor? And most people would say. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. And 
The future is in the data, and people are just realizing that. And the value in being able to determine the future People are just starting to figure out what that's worth. And so as we look at data in real estate today, I caution everybody not to move in one direction based on what people are saying nationwide because all markets are different. Sure. And we're talking about huge valuations that people haven't really put together yet. And that's the worst time to sell something or right is when you're not sure, sure. of the value. And, and that goes back to what we always see happen in real estate, right? We want to have a global reach but real estate at the end of the day is always local, depending on your particular marketplace. No doubt about it. So Saul, let's go back into the early 1990s when you were on the board of directors, and I think you were president-elect at that time, and Sandy Core was formed as a local uh, MLS. Maybe you can talk about your experience from the beginning of uh, the MLS at that time to. Uh, where we are today and where you think we're going in the future. Great uh, question, and we could spend days talking about it. I threatened to write a book about this. Um, the fact is that we were looking, all of us looking for easier ways to allow us more freedom to sell real estate countywide back then. And um, we had multiple lock boxes. We had 11 associations of realtors in San Diego County. We had a number of multiple listing services, and it was very difficult if you were going to go from one neighborhood to the other, from one, one part of town to another, to sell real estate. So we started with lock boxes, and we went to a countywide lock box. And then we got the idea, and we were early in the U.S., that we should uh, put together a regional multiple listing service. Now. Part of the problem in San Diego County, and it was duplicated around the country, is that usually the big associations of realtors are held in suspect by the smaller association of realtors, and we call the you know the 800-pound gorilla concept. And so while every, which is just natural, kind of big against no matter small where you go, with anything, right? You find it everywhere. And, so. and the MLS was really a way of brokers being able to share their data and be able to have a place to cooperate with commissions. Yeah, and that actually is the, the foundation of, of MLS, is that it's an offer of cooperation and compensation. Mm -hmm. That kind of is the glue that holds it together. People are confident they're gonna get paid if they work on another broker's listing. And it's actually, it's a great system. It's the envy of the world. Nowhere else in North America does this capability exist like this, and we have the most fluid real estate market that you have probably anywhere in the world. And I would say we know that, Saul, by all the outside uh, people in the real estate industry trying to get the MLS data for, the, for their own third-party purposes. And trying to learn how we do it. Yes. Right. So, so we've got this great thing that's been created, not without its issues, not without problems. In San Diego, when we formed Sandicor, the regional MLS here, we actually gave up as the San Diego Association of Realtors for the good of the of the county. We actually gave up voting power and and gave up control to try to bring together what was uh, pol some political issues that we had realtor-wise throughout San Diego County. And we got that MLS and we put it together and we weren't confident that we'd put it together right and later it proved that we weren't, uh, we didn't put it together right even though we got great uh, legal advice from a number of different sources. Uh, suffered through an antitrust lawsuit uh, with the Freeman case, as you remember, and changed the structure of San Decor. And, and now as I, I'm uh, involved again in San Decor, I see some of the same old things we've had before. Hopefully I'm very optimistic that we'll be able to get through some of those things. Uh, some things never change, I find. And, and some come full circle. And some come full circle, for sure. So, Saul, as I listen in the industry today and with MLSs, there seems to be a collapse of the definition between data sharing among MLSs and mergers of MLSs. And it seems like they're two very different things. One's about sharing data and making it uh, where agents can work and have data wherever they need. The other is more of a financial decision when you talk about companies merging together. Can you give us your thoughts and viewpoints on those two things and sure. what's important either way with them? Well, I think that uh, real estate's local and marketplaces are different and what works in one marketplace doesn't necessarily work in another place. And so data sharing, that makes sense. That's about sharing that real estate data that we're now using to show homes, to see homes, and also probably to do comps for CMAs, that kind of real estate data. And sharing of that opens marketplaces. 
Now, to do that, do you have to merge businesses? And that's where I have a conflict. Sometimes it makes sense to do that, and sometimes it doesn't make sense to do that. Each marketplace is individual. What gets me is when somebody comes to town and says, it makes sense for everybody, no matter where you are, that this is the model that should work for you, and that's not necessarily the case. Well, I think we could relate to that because sometimes we feel like in San Diego, we're special. You know, we're not Los Angeles. Uh, we're, we're not Humboldt, California. We're San Diegans, right? And I know when I talk to realtors and friends up in the LA area or Orange County or other places, uh, they feel much the same way. Like we're the last place south, right? And they have all the culture and all the great things that happen within their cities and their counties. So, you know, as I look at, at data share and merger. There's a great push to merge and you see this nationwide and you see this push to go from 830 MLSs to 30 or 50 MLSs in the next 10 years. And to me, I'm thinking, why? Do we know that even makes sense? Nonetheless, that's where the pressure is. And so can you accomplish the same sorts of things with data sharing. So I think data sharing solves an initial issue, and that is allowing for the market to function the way that it can function if you expand boundaries. However, the idea that it all has to be owned by one entity, that speaks to the future of the data and the power that will be resident in that entity that then owns the data and all the data that's created from it. So it's one thing to handle the issues of today and data share kind of gets to that. It's another thing to consider very, very seriously, do you want to actually bring business entities together? So what's fascinating about that uh, part of the conversation, Saul, is that if you look at what's happening in commercial data, commercial real estate data, versus residential. Commercial real estate is trying to go the other way. They're actually trying to form more competition among that data and, and commercial MLSs because right now it's pretty much a monopoly in their business and they have to pay, a commercial agent will pay, or broker will pay huge fees to belong to an MLS. So they're actually trying to figure out a way to, how do they create more competition? And our industry is kind of looking the other way about, well, we've got a lot of competition. How do we get out of some of that competition? Is it better? Well, how, yeah. how do you know? Well, I think the marketplace will tell you. And right now, what we have in San Diego is we have a marketplace that works. And people are listing and selling real estate and we have a successful operation and it served the realtors of San Diego County for as long as I've been doing this, and that's about 40 years. And I think that there's a lot of life into the way real estate is done in San Diego County. And alliances outside of the county, of course, they should be looked at and they make sense. But because people from the outside tell you you need to do something when they don't exist here in this marketplace, I think you just need to take that with a grain of salt. But always move forward, Corey, right? So Saul, obviously there's a lot going on in the world of uh, data and MLSs and associations, and it'll be interesting to, to see all this clear up because I'm sure we'll get a much clearer picture in the next three to five years. Well, even if we don't, we're gonna have a good time following this story. That's right. So Saul, I wanna thank you for being a guest here today. It's been fascinating uh, to have this interview with you and get your perspectives, uh, both coming back from Inman and on the topics that were discussed there. I'm Corey Shepard, your 2016 president, and this has been The Scoop. <laughs>